Hello and welcome to another Z Classroom video on the Curve Surface Brush. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the Curve Surface Brush to create a cloth that looks like it's falling over top of this cube. Before we begin with the brush, I want to point out that this cube is actually a Dynamesh with a resolution of 104. So let's start by selecting our brush. So we're going to click on the B key for brushes so we can pull up our palette. And because I'm looking for the Curve Surface Brush, I'm going to hit the letter C, which ZBrush will highlight only the brushes that start with the letter C. You can see right here is my curved surface brush, so I'm going to click on that. And by default, this brush is going to have, under the stroke, the curve mode on. So let's take a look at what we can do with this brush. So what's really great about this brush is as I draw out a curve and continue to draw out curves, ZBrush is going to constantly look at the previous curves and continually add to the mesh so we can get a nice piece of surface that goes around this cube. You may have also noticed I can draw different sizes, I can put them at different points on this cube. It doesn't really matter what we're going to do with this because the curved surface brush will continually just keep making a surface wrapping around the cube. Now you may have also noticed how thick this cloth is at the point. So what's controlling this is my brush size. So you can see currently my brush size is 28. If I did make this smaller by clicking on the S key, and then I can change my brush size, or I can tap the right click button, and I can pull up my quick menu to change my brush size. So we'll go to a smaller one, say like 13, and then clicking on my curve, you can see that the surface is automatically changed. So changing our brush size again here, and then clicking on our surface will change the overall thickness of our surface. So for cloth, I'm gonna go a little bit thinner and we'll go to something like this. So we have a nice thickness now to our cloth. What also is a huge advantage of using the curves is at any point on any of these curves, I can go back and start editing and moving these curves around and start saying maybe there's wind popping up underneath here and blowing a certain part of this cloth or I want it to be a little bit longer here and then blowing up and have a little more movement in the cloth than what we currently do. So you may have noticed that as I'm doing this, my icon for my brush is changing. It's changing from the red brush icon to a blue brush icon. You may have noticed that the draw size is gonna change. So currently I have a 16 draw size for my normal brush and I have a 28 draw size for my editing the curve draw size. So this is controlled underneath the stroke palette by the curve edit radius. So you can see that this is set at 28. Now in order to get to that slider very quick, all we have to do is move over a curve and again, click the S key and you can see I can adjust this brush size. So now I can have either a smaller or bigger brush size to make bigger movements to our curve. Now this comes in really handy if I wanna make some minor tweaks and adjustments, maybe I wanna start moving this curve a little differently. You can see that if I grab the curve, I'm moving the whole curve itself. I wanna be able to just move certain points of this. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go under my stroke. I'm gonna click on bend. This bend is gonna allow me to bend the curve. So as you can see, when I scroll over the curve now, it almost looks like this has like a rubber band feel to it. So I can start adjusting just minor points now of a particular curve. And of course, what also will help control that is the draw size itself. So if I go to a smaller draw size, I'm affecting less points on the curve compared to a larger draw size. So this creates a really quick and fast workflow for me to be able to tweak this cloth that's wrapping around my cube. So I'll continue to make some quick adjustments here and then we'll continue on now seeing now that we have this, what do we do with it? Well, I have a good start to cloth being moved on this cube. Now I want to make the cloth work more into the cube and make it look like there's cloth actually laying on the cube. So I'm going to unmask my cube by holding down the control key and dragging the canvas. And again, if you remember, this cube is already a dynamash. So I'm going to hold down the control key and read dynamesh by dragging on the outside. And you can see my curves disappear, but now this cloth has become part of the cube. So selecting any brush, even the smooth brush, I can start smoothing out parts of my cloth where I want smoothed out. Or if I want to, I can switch to something like 
our clay buildup brush. So I'm going to click the letter B for brushes. I'm going to click the letter C for clay buildup. And right above the curved surface, we have our clay buildup. Now I can just start tweaking this cloth and building in where maybe I want to add a little more definition of a wrinkle coming in here. Maybe I want to add a tension point coming from this point. So this is a great brush to start laying down some quick foundation to work with the already surface material. So I'm going to switch to now the Damien Standard brush. I'm going to click the letter B and then D for Dame Standard. And this brush is really going to help me to create a really nice quick cut into the surface to really make it look like there's a tension point happening from this corner because of this cloth piece being laid and draped over it. Now don't don't forget to also hold down the Alt key to push out with this brush because that can create a really nice effect on this point. And that's using the curved surface brush. Thank you for watching the video. Please continue to watch more Z Classroom videos on Pixelogic.com.